my talk the other day, I was talking about what happened 50 years ago. And uh, at that time, they didn't really know anything about intrauterine growth retardation, as it was called at that time. Today, we would not use that term because uh, just hearing the word retardation makes mothers, very, mothers and fathers very frightened. But there's a process called intrauterine growth restriction where the fetus does not grow to his or her full potential. When it's getting to be uh, a threat to the fetus in utero because of low oxygen, the, the fetus automatically shifts the ability to deliver the blood. Similar to if you were a, a famous tennis player and you were out playing tennis for four hours, you don't stop for a bathroom break because you aren't making very much urine. All your blood is going to your muscles, your trunk, your arms and legs. The fetus does the same thing. In an attempt to stay healthy, it will shunt or redistribute the blood uh, to the brain, to the heart, and to the various um, important organs. What doesn't seem to get uh, the blood is the, the liver and, and the, the body, the arms, the legs, and so forth. And the baby actually decreases in weight, loses, loses uh, weight. A very good study that was done in England by Barker and reported in 1992 in the British Medical Journal. He showed if the baby was born with a small head um, and was low birth weight, that it stood a higher chance of cardiovascular disease when the, when the child grew up and was in midlife, let's say around 50, 48, 50. Um, and they also had a higher incidence of, of uh, death due to cardiovascular disease. So I, I think it's a, uh, it's a very real uh, problem, uh, but it does not mean that it has to be a danger uh, if managed correctly.